Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you tell me my voice is okay? Is it audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Thank yes, you. Thank you. I think 12 to 11 people are there. Uh, this is our first session. We are meeting each other, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Can we just have um, a one minute of intro with each other? Then we'll move on to with what we can do. For the given sessions um i think um, last semester itself the last batch for the last batch itself they try to introduce that um, uh, each subject will be done by two faculty uh, but midway we again they've decided that no it will be done by one faculty but i think we are back to doing that same activity like you know we are doing uh, two faculty will be dealing with one subject so i think um, given a an understanding um, i'll go with the those three to four units which are being given to me as part of my completion. And uh, I think that should be fine with both of us. Um, to begin with, uh, should I talk about myself or should I listen to you guys about at least uh, at least in one one minute? Thank can you, you tell you about yourself? Thank you. Ma'am, you, you can please proceed. Sorry? Ma'am, you can please proceed. Proceed in the sense about myself? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fine. Uh, I'm Dr. Srila Lita. I'm basically from an uh, international business background of exports imports as an executive. I worked with Hyundai Aviation Engineering Limited. And I moved into uh, Iketabix in 2000 after my eight and a half years to nine years of uh, experience. And then I have couple of assignments I've done, others, uh, other assignments also outside the country, like um, I was there in Japan. My association with Japanese and Koreans goes back to my industry experience. So, and then Kaizen is part of my uh, activities that I've learned more on the hands also. And then Kaizen also is part of my PhD. Uh, so I'm into change management, Kaizen quality. I'm a Z master trainer, um, Quality Council of India member wherever there's uh, six S and five S modules and Kaizen events, I do go for workshops. I'm also a co trainer of ILO, International Labor Organization, uh, doing a project there in Andhra Pradesh with two uh, units with uh, textile industries. A uh, couple of things that I can say that uh, my executive education at London School of Economics has made me to learn much more things about change and innovation. That was my important um, learning from my cross-cultural and others also. I've been there in South Africa, Ethiopia, was there in Australia, went to Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia, right, um, kind of other assignments. Uh, before last year, 2022, I was there in Toyo University as a visiting professor uh, for teaching international business, international marketing, as well as cross-cultural management to the Japanese university. <clears throat> Briefly, and uh, I started off as an exports executive and I just jumped into international business because I was asked to teach what I know, what I got as a hands-on experience. Then I understood that I've got more of a people-oriented and so on. I did my MA psychology, MHRM and MA philosophy. And uh, <clears throat> I'm into more of a spiritual orientation also. So meditation, mental, mental well-being meditation also has been part of my thing. And I'm last 14 years, I'm into seriously meditation. I was with uh, Isha as well as Art of Living, and I've been to a couple of uh, initiations of uh, Buddhism also. So that's how it becomes a kind of, a, my basket is into three to four layers of basket areas where I'm into. Uh, one of which is definitely is quality and change management, innovation, design thinking, and so on. That's where I, I started contributing to the ISTD's lessons and so on. Briefly, this is about me. And right now I... I had uh, international business as one of the universities in South India. 
and uh, I am the chairperson of the executive education program for all the executive education that we do and management development programs. So a lot of industry interaction and a lot of, you know, consultancy projects also I do. A lot of CSR projects I do. I'm doing with the uh, uh, tribal management and the tribal women uh, empowerment uh, program. And then one uh, assignment, which is being funded by Toyotsu under CSR for more than 10 lakhs. So we're doing the upliftment of uh, women, especially girl, child of the tribal and the women of the tribal for their health and the education and the prosperity. These are very uh, brief things about me. I can just see you guys at least one minute and what you are. Uh, I think we can go ahead or that should be fine. Namaskar. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm Jagannath Mukherjee. Uh, I'm working for Life Insurance Corporation of India for last 34 plus years. And right. uh, listening to your introduction, uh, I'm speechless, <laughs> no. uh, looking at such a vast and uh, this about spirituality is not mentioned in your intro. I got, have gone through the book material today. Only. I got it uh, just two days ago and I'm posted as principal divisional training center at Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. Though I, though I not belong to Madhya Pradesh, I belong to Maharashtra. Okay. Uh, I'm a commerce postgraduate and law graduate and... Uh, uh, I'm training our agents and field staff, that is development officers, for last uh, uh, teaching experience. Uh, formally, is around uh, uh, six years plus. Uh, so that's short about me. I have authored a few books. Uh, that is again uh, textbooks kind of thing for our insurance industry. Okay. And uh, recently, one book is published. That is life insurance finance. Uh, initially, I wrote a book about uh, statistics. That is in insurance. And then the principles and facts. All those are technical books. And that's about me. Thank you very much. Great, sir. So nice to hear. Thank you. Yes. Next. Because I'm not seeing your videos. Otherwise, I would have called you by name. Should I call you by names? Yeah. Akashi, Advani ji, Akshata ji, Anil, Bishwadeep ji, Deepu Sharma, Jagannath Kulkarni ji. I think now, just now he spoke. Manasa ji. Monalisa, uh, Rasya Modak, and then Sanjay, Tamil Selvan, Tamil Selvan, yeah, I'm seeing all of them. Yes, sir, Vishwadeep ji. Uh, yes, sir, good, uh, good morning, madam, good morning to all. My name is Vishwadeep Banerjee, and uh, my profession um, actually belongs to a pharma industry. Mm -hmm. Presently, I am a regional sales manager of Eastern Region. Mm -hmm. So, with the 18 years of experience in pharmaceuticals uh, background, mm -hmm. so this is all, ma'am. And this is my first. Uh, I actually uh, absolutely fresh in learning and development uh, this, uh, field. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Quickly, others, please, because later on other sessions, even if we don't switch on the video, it's okay. But we will understand what kind of cohort I'm talking to so that we can draw very good, rich examples and so on. Right? Yeah. Ma'am, good morning. This is Oindra Lalaki. I'm from Kolkata. I'm working uh, in a manufacturing organization. I bring about 14 years of experience in HR. I'm working as generalist profile. And in current organization, I'm also... Uh, trying to drive learning and development program with the help of my seniors in the organization and with my other colleagues uh, in HR um, team. Mm -hmm. uh, very happy to be part of uh, this program, this ISTD training program. That's a very good learning platform. Yes. And we are trying to implement uh, whatever we are learning out of, out, uh, out of this platform. And it is our, uh, we are fortunate enough to be in touch with uh, such great people in this forum. Thank yes, you so much. It's always an honor to be there. Yes, yes ma'am. Rasia ji. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, my name is Rasia. Um, I've been, uh, I'm working with Reliance Brands currently and I've been in learning and development for the last uh, six years. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some retail experience and some exports experience prior to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm currently working as a retail uh, learning and development uh, specialist. So I'm looking forward to upskilling myself and to get a formal, this formal certification, PG diploma. So that's why I'm here. And uh, I, in the last two semesters, at least the experience is that a lot of things 
that we are learning here is helping stitch mm -hmm. the chaos together together with the structure so great yeah i'm based in pune and that thank you thank you thank you yeah next others good afternoon ma'am i'm sanjay singh uh, i'm sanjay singh currently working as a senior manager at your in nhpc limited that is the national handheld power corporation mm -hmm. and right now i'm posted in siliguri Okay. I've been working with this uh, corporation since 2004, and it's today that I have completed 20 years. So, wow, congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, I look at, uh, I study uh, certification course as uh, an opportunity to interact with uh, so many uh, luminaries in uh, L&D processes and uh, try to relearn, unlearn, and, uh, uh, and update myself with that latest uh, things that are going in the l, l d processes. Thank you, ma'am. Right, sir. Thank you. Yeah, quick. Others, please. Uh, Anil here. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Anil here. Anil Chauhan and... Uh, actually listening to your uh, you know profile it was amazing and it i feel very impressed uh, by your uh, you know background and also you seem to be having interest in politics uh, i think you studied political science also in no no i went to london, london school of economics political science but i oh. gone for in innovation and change management and entrepreneurship that's my executive education yeah Okay, so politics is also one of my interesting subject, but I I just uh, I never studied that. Actually, yeah. I'm a, a seafarer. I, I I did my marine electronics, and I was sailing for last twenty five years. Now, off late, I just uh, resigned, and I'm doing an uh, offshore job mm -hmm. where I'm a DG DG certified director general of shipping. Uh, faculty member oh. where we train the new bearers wow wow so you are part of dgft and uh, uh no director general of shipping dgs dgs okay mm -hmm. uh, but uh off and also i'm uh, doing a job uh, for uh, great ship mm -hmm. uh, in uh, hsc health safety and environment mm -hmm. where we train the crew how to be safe how to save life at sea and all the other things so this okay. is okay. from my side. Do you also Thank deal you. with the HMTS, uh, that hazardous material, no? dangerous goods? Uh, yes, yes, we, we do. Yes, we do with the uh, dealing with the hazardous uh, substances, chemicals, and uh, other uh, petroleum products. Great, great. That's nice to see here, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, others, please. Yes. Um, good afternoon, madam. This is Advani here. Advani ji, bolye. Uh, so just wanted to uh, really, uh, you know, echo on everybody what they have mentioned about the ISTD platform, about the learning and about the faculty. Mm -hmm. It is truly, truly our honor and a pleasure to have you on this platform. Thank you. To begin with. And uh, talking about myself, just like Anilji, I'm a CFR myself. Oh. And currently I am actually on a vessel. Mm -hmm. which is uh, in sailing in a different time zone. So that's why I'm actually working on a different time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, myself, just like you, I also have similar common uh, things. Uh, I started my career in foreign trade. Okay. You know? So I, when I was studying and I finished my, uh, my, my uh, post-graduation diploma in foreign trade management. From? Uh, from Garware Institute, oh, Vidya Nagri, Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I got opportunity to travel, and I've been in the sales uh, since the last, uh, I think, about 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, in my current role, I'm working in, on board for the Royal Caribbean uh, company, the Royal Caribbean International Company. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of their subsidiaries is called Celebrity Cruises. So I'm actually on Celebrity Cruise right now. 
and uh, working in the mid management level uh, as an assistant manager, uh, pursuing the L and D role uh, into the future into the company. So this is my uh, very first, uh, you know, step uh, to get to that level. So that, this is what does I'm. Does it come under liner shipping? I uh, beg your pardon. That that your uh, seafarer thing is covering under the liner shipping. Is it to commercial uh, fleet? No, uh, no, it's a it's a passenger cruise liner. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a it's actually a cruise line. So you know, celebrity cruises. Okay. So I, I work for them. Yeah. Very nice. So very nice, sir. Thank you. And of course, my travel takes me to all the countries around the globe. So I've traveled extensively around the globe by now. Very nice. Super. <clears throat> Super. Yes. That's about me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Manasaji. <clears throat> so sorry. I'm actually eating my breakfast. No I try to wrap everything by 12 o'clock, you know. I, but I got late. So I'm just munching while listening to all of you guys. It's so alien to me, all these concepts, or whatever you guys are talking, trade, all that, because I'm an engineer. I'm a computer science engineer. I work for an IT firm. <laughs> that would be more alien to us, you know. None of us are, I, at least I'm not a computer graduate. Yeah. But yeah. ma'am, I just have one honest question. How did you find the time to read so much? Like, um, I am I am literally in awe and admiration towards your uh, determination to study so much. Uh, <laughs> um, really, uh, I'm look I'm really looking forward to you know listen to you and uh, listen to my uh, fellow students here who have <clears throat> diverse uh, you know experience and knowledge. So I'm really looking forward to this class and uh, thank you so much. I will continue to eat for another few minutes. Please don't consider that as disrespect. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you so much. Please leave some for me, Mansa. No, it's just two rotis and I've been on intermittent <laughs> fasting. I'm hungry. Please let me That's enjoy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Anyone else, please? Left to talk. Yes, um, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Tia Khurana. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. presently am based in Dehradun. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm pursuing my PhD from IIT Roorkee. In uh, the topic I've chosen is women empowerment and helping them brand their products. Wow. Uh, side by side, I'm doing this course, and um, and presently I'm working in an, uh, a group of institution in Dehradun, mm -hmm. which imparts uh -huh. uh, you know um, uh, degrees in MBA, hospitality, mass communication, etc. Mm -hmm. So I uh -huh. take care of the value added programs there. Um, searching for new val uh, value added programs, uh, making sure that the uh, the ones which are ongoing are executed properly and also somewhat assisting uh, in the placements of the MBA students and, you know, kind of uh, uh, coordinating with the industries. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's about me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Others, please, anyone left over, please. We'll try to wrap it up quickly and then we'll go ahead. Swarnalata. Hi, ma'am. Ma I'm Daisy here. Yeah. Daisy yeah. Swarnalata. Yeah. Hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Um, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm from Chennai and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I work for Simpson and Company Limited. Mm -hmm. uh, we are into diesel uh, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So I have an experience over about 25 years, uh, totally in HR, in the different uh, areas of HR. And uh, now I'm taking care of talent acquisition and talent management. Okay. Yeah, that's about me. A very short description. Mode. Thank you. Very nice, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Others, please. Oh my, yeah, name, uh, this is Tamil Chalvan. Mm -hmm. so I am electrical engineer by profession. So okay. I am with uh, NLC India Limited for the past 30 years. So because I have some passion on training and development. So I have joined this course. This is my brief about it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, very good afternoon, all of you. Uh, I am Vipul Kumar from Delhi. And uh, uh, I am having total years of 15 years of experience overall. And I am in training and development since last 10 plus years. And I am a corporate trainer. Right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other? Before I start, please. Done. Done, ma'am. Yeah, well, yeah. 
Yeah, you can start, please. Sorry. You, you can you start, start. Yeah, sure. You can start, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Okay, we'll be just uh, briefly going to talk about uh, we're all aware of change. We're all aware of innovation. And uh, do we also look at uh, innovation and change starts with something like improvisation, right? Any inter any industry, any particular organization which is wanting to do something, um, there are two varieties of changes that can happen straight away. That is continuous changes, that is on an incremental base, it's a continuous improvement or change overnight or just like a, you know, Overnight, there's a huge shift in whatever that we are doing business, uh, disruptive changes and disruptive innovations that we get to see. But in whichever case it is, is your industry, is your company, is your sector, whatever has happening there in the sector of yours, are you ready? To what extent that you are ready? In many occasions, if you're not ready, you're out of the business, right? And we have seen a couple of examples like that. A couple of businesses have gone back and they had to really go down because they were not ready for the changes. And the changes that they were not even expecting to come, right? That's a very interesting way because completely it's a uh, sweeping changes that they were supposed to get ready for it. Hmm? So change may not always lead to innovation, but innovation always have got change in it. This is something very interesting. For every change that you are trying to make, there is a component of improvisation in it that if you are not ready, improvisation, there cannot be a change. And there is no way that you are moving forward for the innovation. So your standard operation procedures, if you are actually deviating, if you have not maintained, if you are not standardized your operations procedure, your SOPs, and then you do have the problem in even maintaining the status quo of your standard of operations, then you're not ready for the regular change. They are not ready for even a normal improvisation. So you're very far from the innovation. That's what is the basic understanding. Let's say that you are a, you're, you're maintaining your car, a scooter, a house. The general basic status quo of how it should be running, if that itself is missing or if that itself is not fixed proper in a very standard operations, you are actually very far from anything to do upscale or any updating or you know improvisations. So change is impossible for you because you're running on a very different you know, scale of operation or in a very different way. So in terms of strategy and vision creation, innovation management is concerned with identifying and creating new areas of corporate goals. So we all would like to see that how do you want to see yourself and what is that you want to do? All your vision and mission statements are also thinking big and then how do you want to penetrate and diversifying and then want into enter into other countries or other areas of sectors that you have not started off with, but you have ended up with multiple kinds of sectors, which is interesting, right? So you are changing so many ways. And one is you are changing the way that you want to be serving and the, the way that you want to function. Second one is the way that you are operating, the process itself is also changing, right? Because earlier you were doing different kind of production. Today, a lot of technology driven. So production is also a different process altogether. So a lot of changes that you, but how how fast you that you are ready to adapt and then you are able to quickly on your feet, you're trying to understand that is something. Sometimes many of our changes and improvisations is to make sure that um, you were customizing things for, you know, uh, customers and or to differentiate ourselves. Also, we're changing. But to keep up with the what's happening, the contemporary situation of the market of your particular sector, also change is important per se to go with our intro. Okay. Now, introduction to innovation change management, if at all, we're trying to talk about importance of innovation. Is innovation important? Definitely. Are we doing it on a purpose? Many occasions we are not doing it on purpose because it happens that we need to really move up and then we would like to bring a bit of empathy for the customers that we would like to give so many varieties of things. Maybe you're already always searching for a better thing, better thing, and then that's where innovation has come. Then you would like to do in a very different way, cost cutting, 
effective, more faster. Your last leg of operation, your last mile of operation, you want to change much faster. You would like to cut down on your lead times, your supply chains that you would like to see. Maybe you would like to increase your you know, time of travel or time of uh, process. Whatever it is, you are in adapting some things which you are not doing right now. You are increasing your pace or innovation or a change or improvisation levels of it. Now, role of innovation and change management is bigger one. Okay. And steps of st stages of, uh, you know, successful innovation implement processes. Some companies have really done a great job of putting their innovation process much faster. Of one such is, you know, all the innovation things that, you know, we all really look up to your uh, Teslas, right? And then anyone who was not even thought about your uh, EVs, electrical vehicles, Tesla was already there. It was a prime move and it's a prime company to deal with and massively, you know, invested into EVs long back itself. Now, the companies also are always breathing and their DNA is innovation. They want to do something and on a daily basis, they're doing it, right? And I'll try to deviate over here. <clears throat> we'll also talk about how, how bad some companies really failed by not taking the basic investment into more of an R&D, more of a research onto basic changes and that they are supposed to be contemporary or they have not seen some things which was coming from the corner and that's how they lost the game. We'll also talk about those things, okay? Innovation models, eight steps of innovation we'll talk about. And uh, um, those innovation steps is part of a theoretical, we'll go ahead, right? Now, I'll try to just this one and I'll try to show you something which is also very interesting as an example. Now, what is the importance of innovation is innovate or perish. It's like, you know, you do it or you perish, you'll be out of it, right? If you're not learning, you're out of it. If it is applicable, all the innovation process and the change management is applicable to specific company, sectors, industries, individual nations also. It, it is across massively applicable because if you're not learning, you're outdated, you're obsolete. Your complacency is making you not to learn, then you are the loser, right? So some such kind of uh, examples I think that India has seen is your Hindustan Motors ambassador as a, as a car. Uh, India was giving great business in ambassadors at the peak of its uh, you know BCG metrics and then it was really having a great business. But India also was waiting for more than six months after you book the car. What do you think that you will you will you will be getting the same loyalty from the customers? The Suzuki has entered and then the business has diverted. And India has waited for more than 35 years or 40 years for um, ambassador to give a new shape or the new design or a new model, which didn't happen. Now, what happened? You don't even look at ambassador today because there are so many number of players. So you lost the game. Because you haven't invested that how best that you can offer and what are the other services or the variants that you can give it to the Indian customer, right? So it's the case with uh, Nokia. How many all of us can, we can have interaction. My lesson is not just on to PPT or discussion. We'll draw more of interaction also. Is that okay, all of you? Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So how many of you can recall what the CEO of the Nokia was actually saying in his last uh, public speaking, saying that we have done everything that what we can, and but still we lost the game. But if you're a real industrial critic, corporate critic, you would say, no, 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 boss, you haven't you haven't done what you're supposed to do as a Nokia CEO or a Nokia research. Because if you look at your R&D investment was not up to the mark, you were happy with what was happening with your Nokia sales, but you have not seen Android is going to come and sweep the market. You have really taken Android as a software very lightly, and that has swept you, and the rest is history. And you are no more on the map of, you know, all of them, those who are very loyal to Nokia, you thought that they can actually continue to be as a loyal? No, nobody is loyal unless you are not giving that kind of utility and value for money and something else which is completely different that is not being seen like a smart screen earlier it has beaten the market two things has happened simultaneously one is android software then immediately you have got the smart screen both has actually is a doomsday conspiracy for companies like nokia which is not put into their effort and more of an r d 
what happens so some companies those who are not taking your research and development seriously and your financial allocations into r and d is not much and you are you are very happy with your cash cows what's happening in your company i think you are marching towards into a very different direction how many of you agree with that right yes sir yes yeah and we have yes, seen kodaks you have seen hmts you have seen kodaks you have seen so many things which have become obsolete yeah how many of you use western union as a as a service provider for your money transfer if you have been out of the country you would have used it along with your banking sorry yeah i have used it i have used it daisy daisy yeah i have used it you have used it right yeah. and you know the beginning of the western union service as a company the starting of that there were telex operators i mean they were they were sending the telex messages across that was the beginning of the western union if 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 at all we want to talk about change and how a company can sustain the sectors in whatever change in that sector i think there is no other example that i can quote than the western union services which which started with your telex message you know service providers you know you earlier used to say that dida dida da that telex message and then they were sending it up but today it's the most reliable trustworthy uh, financial operator service provider if you want to transfer money great they were transferring messages but today they are transferring money but how did that happen it's not easy it's actually adapting flexibility of change and you are actually up in the contemporary business and you have really redefined what you want to provide as a service that's interesting and it's not easy to be associated with the financial services that to transferring money that to you are not a banking corporation but you are a you know ancillary unit or any other allied services that you are providing into the financial market is not a joke and look at the way that they have actually carved their niche area of transferring of money and i appreciate always when they when the when the process when i look at it the way that they have actually got the market i'm looking at some of the people have raised or they voice or something somebody wanted to say yes ma'am i just wanted to please, share something over here because please, please, um, please. now that you brought up the western union uh, you know as a money transfer so basically i remember uh sending the remitting the funds via wire transfer and yeah. then now it's all digitized and it's all uh, you know digital innovation and uh, transformation that's happened in the industry and then there are many other players in the market as well you know so it's become a it's it's definitely you know the change has uh, been seen in this industry thank you yes yes i'll show you something which i would like to share just give me one minute Just hold on. I would like to share something. Sure. is the voice reachable to you no ma'am we can't hear no madam uh, voice yes, is... okay then i'll do it such a problem now Oh so, ma'am, while uh, sharing the screen, you'll have to click on enable for video share, and then the sound will also come. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't see it is happening. No, while you're sharing, ma'am, actually, when you click on the screen share, it will show all the different windows you have open. You click on the YouTube window and at the bottom left of your uh, options, there'll be an enable video sharing. Uh, there'll be some two tick boxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you're sharing, ma'am, not over here. Like once you stop sharing, you click on the share button again. Okay. On the bottom left, where that white pop-up opens up and you have to select the window, on the bottom left, there are two tick boxes that you have to click. On the video YouTube or on the Zoom thing? On the Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is visible right now, right? Visible, but sound is not coming this way. Right. I don't. I haven't clicked it. Now this is uh, one. Uh, I'm. I have taken this as an example because I live there and work there also. Uh, Freshness Burger is a company of a Japanese and uh, which has seen uh, a bit of sales down for the reason. Uh, there's a custom, a social custom of Japan that uh, women of Japan would like would like to um, have more of a privacy like this whenever they smile or when they eat. So the burgers which are bigger size were not actually getting sold to the women because they don't want to the, open their mouth in a bigger way. I think I think even that's also possible there in the East Asian and the Indian also. Um, barring the younger generation, they would like to be more comfortable whatever they would like to do. But if you see uh, on a on a terms of you know how basic etiquette and all i think that goes well with the indian thing also so there's a very interesting um, customization or innovation they have done i would like to see let's see that whether our uh, still voice not there oh sorry for this I'm extremely sorry we've done it several times i don't know why Should we share this one, which is easier for you right now instead of wasting time? But I really want you guys to see this. Let me yeah, that's a good idea, ma'am. Yeah. Let me share it in the chat. See, if you're able to see that. Yes, ma'am. Quickly, I think I would like to, anyway, show this one over here. Even if there is no voice, you can understand because. For Japanese women, having an ochobo, small and modest mouth, is regarded as. Is it audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, a large open mouth is regarded as ugly and rude. It is therefore considered good manners to cover the mouth when opening it. This means they are denied the wild pleasure of taking mouth-sized bites of this big tasty burger freely in public. Freshness Burger decided to challenge this convention, freeing women from the spell of the ochobo mouth. We introduced the Liberation Wrapper, a large wrapper that lets women fulfill their desire for a big, juicy, mouth-sized bite of a classic burger. And that is for everyone. Result. The campaign was a big and instant success. Sales of classic burger to female customer was up to 213% compared to the previous month. The campaign was featured on national network TV and welcomed by happy voices across social network media. 
okay what's the learning from this what do you call it innovation change improvisation first of all you like the idea it's fabulous yes. good idea first of all i yes ma'am because yes know your customer mm -hmm. and know your customers needs mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to ask a question like why you mentioned about the innovation uh, like if we call in sales and marketing we need to create the pool instead of pushing the product we need to create a pool mm -hmm. which means we need to convince the customer that this is the product we have prepared for you or we have manufactured for you but like in the this video which we have shared just now Uh, what i feel is that it is better to kyc what we call know your customer instead of just knowing his documents we need to know his feelings we know need to know his needs we know need to know his wants then only uh, we can design the product thank you very much right right others also were speaking please tell me somebody was sharing no oh, i just think it's so Quite a revolutionizing. I mean, I'm using the wrong word, but it's 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 an idea. I mean, I'm kind of speechless. Rasya, Rasya, yeah, bully. Yeah, you were saying what? I'm saying it. It's left me kind of speechless. It's uh, it's really thinking out of the box. Yeah, it's very interesting, right? It's very interesting, and and uh, you you call it in innovation. You call it improvisation. You call it change. Can you just debate on it? What do you call it? I no, call it revolution, ma'am. Okay. I think it's a revolution. Revolution, very nice. And how many of you put it into innovative thought or creative, whatever it is? Please do tell us. How do you put it? Which kind of thing? Advani ji, bolye. Ah, uh, I think this is more cultural, ma'am. Hmm. Yeah. The, the need is the need is coming from cultural need. Can yeah, it's, from a, it's a yeah. cultural and diversity because if you think about it in the Western culture, you know. as versus to the asian asian culture uh you know the way we uh, eat you know so you see that uh, pretty visible in this video you know and that's brought about the change so i look at it as a change yes yes that's that's a change yes yeah others also please raise your hand please to talk not necessarily innovation not necessarily you know just just a simple change and that change brought about the uh, desired result that they were trying to achieve mm -hmm. and uh, you know keep going forward so that's how i look at it thanks thank you you are pleased to speak others also have raised their hands <clears throat> yes ma'am i think it's more of an innovation because mm -hmm. you are trying to innovate something uh, new that is the rapper and uh, also you are putting the face of a woman you know so that is in i mean it is in such a beautifully merging into a face it looks as if the exactly, woman is exactly the design you should give to the design also yes and uh, also it is uh, solving the purpose so mm -hmm. in my opinion i think it's a great innovation that they've done right thank you yeah others please yeah those who have raised yeah yeah well i'd like to go um, i feel it's an innovation from some creative bug who observed where the problems lie yeah so um, it's more like um, you give people what they want mm -hmm. like everybody wants to have a burger who would stop from having one so yeah. i guess yeah. that's where the problem lied mm -hmm. and that was served hence uh, you know and plus i would like to add to tia's point uh, the print on the other side of the rapper was was half face of a woman so that also would have probably pushed okay. the you know the yeah them to you know just accept that acceptance part turns out to be very easy yeah instead of just a white paper with a rapper they have exactly. to design also especially from this part of it which correct, is correct. very very creative type yeah thank you yeah others please yeah Yeah, but anyway. I just like to add on. I agree with uh, Tia and Shonak. So, uh, innovation is what I would go with because there is no real change in the mindset, inherent mindset of, okay, opening the mouth is, uh, considered as rude, etc. That mindset stays where they have just created ways for women to enjoy the burger without having to break that mindset or change. So. for me it's innovation it's not really change yeah so the product and the process has not gone for a change 
but the offering and the exterior things the way that you actually pack it or give it as an extra you know uh, service providing thing let's say that you give a wrapper that's an extension of the things that you give right it's accommodating the mindset i would yes, say yes yes yeah. and those are the things but the basic burger quality or the taste or the way size hasn't changed so that's not a process a product or a color of the product hasn't changed interesting yeah others those who want anyone I just wanted to add that somebody did mention about revolution. Mm -hmm. So here, I feel a revolution would be if, you know, again, we look at the mindset and try to change the mindset mm -hmm. in such a way that women are no longer ashamed to open their mouth and they are eating equally as men do, you know, without any taboos attached. That would have been a revolution. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's a very incremental revolution. Of course, it's, it's into the, it's marching towards revolution where even if you give the rapper may not be, in some countries, they may not be even eating, even then, interestingly. So, I, I, yeah, what you said is also right. It's not directly revolution as so. Yeah, I agree. But indirectly, it is moving towards that because they started accepting because at least, they assume they, you know, all you need is there were, there, there's a need of a facade. You need some kind of curtain kind of thing because that's what is coming as an Ojobo kind of uh, thing for the Japanese, which is interesting. Thank you. Uh, right, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bully. And then another day, what we uh, need to understand that innovation, I would categorize this uh, improvement uh, under the category of innovation. Mm -hmm. Because innovation is all about uh, bringing improvement in the existing product or process mm -hmm. that has been done in this case. Yes. And innovation, uh, uh, invention or evolution sort of a thing is the creation of a new product. Mm -hmm. Here, the product was already in existence. Yeah. And we have bought certain level of changes in the processes mm -hmm. to serve the uh, customer. And that yeah. was woman in this case. Yeah. Thank you. Very well said. Um, uh, let me add, uh, it, it, I would say it's a factor of uh, customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So probably the business is customer centric, and you know it's it's a way which uh, helps uh, in uh, improvising, and it would uh, attract more customers, and uh, the profitability also would be on the higher side. Uh, it's it's a way which has uh, contributed towards customer satisfaction. Yes, very well said. Yeah. So we'll quickly see this today, uh, then. I would like to see uh, some more discussions. I want you guys to um, come back with a bit of homework of a reading or just Google through for the next class is like, you know, uh, you call Kodak is a failure of innovation. How many of you agree? Raise your hand. Kodak. Innovation. Kodak innovation failure means they were not keeping the pace with what is happening in the technology of the uh, photograph, right? Photograph industry. Yes. So they're out of the business. Yeah. 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 Next. Uh, how many of you think that uh, what is the um, name that you give for the failure of Yahoo? Is it business strategy, decision making, leadership, as well as innovation? Yahoo is the first service, you uh, know, search engine thing, but it really buzz really on to the you know peak uh, game of the industry. But it had its own ch you know, chances of uh, keeping high, but it didn't. And when it collapsed, it collapsed in a very bad way. It should have actually saved its face. But so, what do you call it? It's a, it's a, it's a failure of um, innovation. Uh, of course, wherever, wherever there's a failure, it's a part of leadership and decision making. How many of you agree with what is a Yahoo saga for you when it comes to Yahoo story? Anyone? Madam, uh, not only the innovation is about the adaptation actually. Yes, upskill. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at the same time, there's another uh, search engine was there, MSN, and mm. uh, Ready Smell. This mm. was a contemporary on with that uh, Yahoo. Mm. Days of all this uh, now is obsolete. Mm. So the same uh, same uh, is, uh, reason. There's an innovation as well as most of all this adaptation. Thank you. Very good. Very good. 
And uh, even today, there's a huge requirement uh, of uh, people, those who got trained on the HMD watches, uh, assembly lines and all, but HMD watch as a watch is no longer in the business or it could make to that big level. You call it is innovation, is you call it failure of investment into R and D. What do you call it? Uh, Madam HMT is a, is a basically I think uh, is a for the uh, specific uh, class of customers actually. Yeah. Because uh, 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 every uh, brand cannot be the same way or same uh, flow actually. Mm -hmm. Some will uh, go for the digital and some will go for uh, the particular the analog or digital. There's the differences. Mm -hmm. everyone's uh, every products they have some uh, specific customer base and that's depend on the choices basically yeah that is the reason you create more variants in your in your thing maybe uh -huh. you start off with something but later on you would like to be in the market because unless you do other variants you'll be out of the market uh, yes yes ma yes right yes yeah yeah then um, how do you think that um, any other any other thing that you think that they were failure because of they were not ready for the market or they were not thinking that the market is asking for this any other example that you get to? Big, big example is nokia nokia yes. it was uh, that was a uh, uh, very uh, uh, fast choice was nokia and this uh, uh, its uh, state was very hardy mm. after that uh, what is i remember that i recall mm. that First uh, color screen was introduced by the Nokia, but later on the Samsung was entered to the market, and that was introduced as a camera phone. So yeah, and then then they were uh, started to introduce a uh, new technology, new software, and they introduced Androids, right? So there on that time there was punching uh, line was what was what is next? Ami Khan was a brand ambassador. Yeah, and with this race, this uh, Nokia was uh, um, uh, this. Uh, uh, with the race that that was far behind of that uh, Samsung, mm. it was introduced Microsoft, mm. and that was uh, not too much uh, user friendly, and it's very complicated. So slowly the uh, the Nokia was out of that market. Actually, this is a great example. What is it like and we call exactly exactly. So no, we cannot finish our change in innovation class without uttering Nokia several times before we finish our syllabus. Because that's the impact of learning from that particular aspect of business, doing business, especially. Now, how many of you agree? agree. Hello? Ma Hello? Sorry, uh, I would like to add two more examples here in the mobile industry. Motorola oh. and BlackBerry, they two were also at the top of the game and yes. then also yes. got on top. Yeah. And uh, to a large extent, BlackBerry was really the, it has stolen the heart of men and they, they were very, very uh, what do you call it? feeling great about blackberry's thing but it so happened that it couldn't continue or sustain right what would be the strategy to not to have the bigger screen whatever if you if you break down that particular strategy how did it of course again it will go back to change and innovation and not able to keep up with the uh, current uh, things and you're not able to make to what is really a, what's the real ask from the customer in, in connection with the contemporary innovation or the technology which is happening. I think that's how they got the card out of it. Okay. Yes, now also, I think my Blackberry got very overconfident and arrogant because of the yes. kind of users it was getting, you know. It thought it had already created a very niche market. So it's not going to go out of business because those niche customers are going to come running to Blackberry. Unfortunately, because they could not keep up, you know, with what's what was happening and the latest technology. So obviously they had to, you know, kind of and and blackberry never looked at women as a customer exactly ma'am yes right? blackberry was really really uh, as you said arrogant whatever it is let's call it whatever it is so uh, it was happy with giving you know this much of size and width and all i don't think that it was it was it was really looking at comfort for um, you know other gender so it's very very uh, i think very focused on to certain kind of customers as you said right now how many of you agree what would be a different level of strategy and is it a failure strategy or a good strategy or is it a um, change is it a failure of a change bajaj stopping the chetak scooter declaring that we are no longer in the chetak in the indian market 
is it a good move or is it a failure of their adaptability to change that what should be given to India, apart from what you're already giving as a Chetak, as a scooter, what next? What next to the customer that you were not ready and you call it off saying that Bajaj is no longer manufacturing scooters, it will only be there in the bikes, four-stroke bike. So how many of you say it's a, it's a wrong decision? How many of you say it's a failure of a change management? How many of you agree or how many of you say yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ignoring, ignorance, ignorance is ignoring Indians in spite of being Indian company itself yeah. is like uh, hurting the ego. You should never, never, never hurt ego of customer. That is very, very essential. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it leads to failure only. And it applies to any company, whether it's a monopoly or monopolistic or whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Others, those who are saying, please, quickly. Uh, Chetak was uh, very much a uh, uh, middle class customer friendly uh, vehicles, actually. Yeah. So, uh, but an uh, organization could have changed as per the market demands. They can change yes. designing or some uh, electronic panels where they can be introduced or some other uh, changes can can be made. But after that, after the changes of that uh, or the st uh, uh, stop the production of this particular vehicles, so uh, uh, the customer has moved to the other options. So whether the customer, any uh, company is losing their market is very hard to again recapture the market. It's very tough. Yeah. So the same thing, the same, uh, the uh, uh, fault, uh, what, what should I say actually? And a wrong decision has, they have taken, I think. Yeah, I yeah, agree. So when you say, when, when, when you say as a company person that we don't want to be a rather, we cannot be there in this scooters market. Are bhai, you have done 35 years or 30 years of business in India. You have got a great goodwill. You have created your great goodwill for Bajaj. And you said that it's like a national anthem. Hamara Bajaj is like almost like a national anthem for India. You did it. And suddenly you declare that we are not going to be there in the space of scooters. The absence of a very good product is going to be a catchment for all the people. Those who have not even those whose product is not even tested. All of them are there in the market and people have started buying it. Now, what happened? This is at the same time I was discussing in my class for the MBA students saying that if I were there in Vespa, I was referring to the immediate competitor to large extent in the scooter is LML Vespa, the, the joint venture that Vespa was happening, having there with India, with LML Vespa. All the people, those are taller, they want a, a bigger leg room for them with tall legs and all, they wanted a better kind of height thing. They were going for LML Vespa as a scooter in comparison to Chetan. But when you declare, let us say that I said after some point the, the joint venture fell, fell apart. Now I was discussing and I was actually challenging saying that I don't know why they have given this announcement yesterday. This is some years back when Bajaj has declared. I said that I was trying to provoke the debate among my students saying that if I'm there in the market, in the scooter making market, I'll revive the contract. I will revive the JV with the LML guys. And the, I would like to see that Vespa enters into the market because you have actually lost a very interesting segment of the scooter because an average Indian man is a family man. He, he would like to take and he has to take his children as well as other things, groceries and also he cannot actually function on a two on, on a bike and a four stroke bike is not all that comfortable for that kind of commuting. So I, I was actually debating saying that it, it's a very wrong move. And guess what? Within one year, all my alumni when they've gone out and then said, ma'am, our discussion is really, really good. As if somebody has really listened to our discussion in the classroom, Vespa is back to India. That too with a different level of a pricing. Vespa's body is, is not good. It's very delicate. It's not a, a strong scooter. Excepting for the color, it doesn't have a res resale value, but people are buying it. And that too, India, which is a very price sensitive, very price sensitive. And you are very, very clear about your value proposition whenever you want to buy. And you know, today you are you are ready to buy 90,000 plus kind of thing on, on road and you are buying a Vespa. What a, what a shame for market losing. Fine, that's a different story. Now, Vespa has entered, it has taken the entire market of the scooter segment because it's an, it, it is a unisex uh, scooter. Fantastic. 
Now that's where the game of the Bajaj was a discussion for us. Now, after seven to eight years, Bajaj comes back to the scooters market with the EV scooter. What? You should have done these changes before. You should have given a different kind of announcement to the market that we would like to exchange the process in a way that we will continue the practice of whatever we are producing, but our focus will shift to EVs. But you lost the customer, those who are supposed to be there in the scooter segment, and you are again back to scooter segment. So what do you call it? Is it is it decision making? Is it uh, you're not ready for change? Of course, we, we called about it. These are all very multiple you know mistakes that you do. As you said, once you lost the market, to gain that market is not that easy, right? By now, many of them have started getting their market. And after, after some point, what we see is, it's 30 to 33 years of your goodwill that you built or over years. You're trying to drop it is not an easy thing. Of course, you and me sitting in the classrooms and discussing, we don't know what their boardroom discussions, what their boardroom crisis is, what their other technical problems that they have. But whatever it is, it didn't augur well. It didn't come out well. That's a discussion point. Okay. Yes. Now, one more thing, Yahoo and the Dreamliner 787 project, which also gone through a lot of crisis for its innovation process because it uh, was a very good uh, initiation. And then it has asked for advances and many of the uh, aviation industry companies, people have really gone for advanced booking of that. Um, but after seventh or eighth level of a leg of operation, it had to call back because there was a huge um, fire uh, accident or a crisis in the mid air for the last completion of that particular uh, variant. Then it, 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 many of them really lost their trust and including Jet and Indian Airways, all of them, those who were in, in connection and they have all paid the money. They all had to take the advance money back. So this Dreamliner Senate 7 thing, we use it as a case study or as a discussion for both ethics, innovation, and then corporate decision-making also. Uh, and the way that you would like to think that what are the levels of involvement that you need in your customers, uh, the way that they, they put your money into your research and development, should an R&D level should be calling for advanced booking or not, especially for the aviation industry checkpoint. So these are certain aspects of discussion that we can make. I would like you guys to come with more of any other information that you Google and a lot of latest updates and more failures and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, disruptive innovations that has actually swept the entire market and the people, those who are not ready, lost their game. Okay. That would be a very interesting debate for us. Right. Um, to complete the systems of bringing about change is something that we would like to see in this order. One is, as we discussed, solving problems. In the entire category that I have, I've shown the uh, Japanese freshness burger is, it is solving the problem. Even to solve the problem, you need a change. You need an improvisation. You need an innovation, right? So you have certain things, situations. To cope up with those situations, you need to bring up your strategy. In that strategy, I think you are changing something, you're improvising something, or altogether you're doing a very great innovative job, right? Next, adapting to change, right? You're adapting to the change. Most of us, we were not ready for so much of online thing. We all had to forcefully adapt to change doing online thing or remotely working because of the COVID because we were not ready. We were supposed to be doing in a very different way, everything with physical, but COVID has put us into a situation where we have to go everything remote and online, right? So adapting to change sometimes more forcefully because external environment is changing rapidly. External environment is giving you a different kind of sudden surprises, which you are not ready. Then you have to quickly adapt to the change, right? Maximizing of the globalization, right? How do you really enter into other markets, right? At that point of the time, maybe unless you really get ready for what other markets to penetrate into those markets, if you're not ready with that kind of strategic mix of it, strategies, I think you will miss the bus. So that's where even change is necessary. Let's say that I'll quickly go for one kind of industry, especially to quote. Let's say that um, 
Godrej is selling locks. Now, Godrej is also selling these days the digital locks. You have the digital password locks to the your doors. But how much of India is ready with digital locks? It will still continue for more than 20 years that the entire uh, construction buildings and all the main doors and rooms and across the India to convert into digital locks, it takes time. But if you go to Vietnam, if you go to Korea, if you go to Japan, all of them, they don't use traditional locks. Most of the constructions, buildings, you do have the electronic passcodes locks. So let's say that if you want to scale up your business into other countries, that's, let's say that Godrej wants to enter into um, locks industry of the other countries, you have to see that what the other countries already at the game because geographically and continentally and other countries basically into their you know challenges of cross-cultural and uh, demographics and the socio-economical situations you see, then that's a different strategy. You may have to do a certain kind of changes because the product that you are going to offer is no longer matching to their existing local standards, right? That's how you need to. So you're diversifying your uh, market extension or market expansion, also trying to see certain kind of strategies. At that point, again, you have a lot of change, innovation mix to happen there in your product strategy, right? Agree? Facing the competition, many of us, um, some companies do innovation because they want to do it on a daily basis, right? Google's your uh, Tesla's, your Wipro's and Infosys guys, and many of them, they say that we are into innovation. So I, I don't want to wait somebody doing a great job and then I have to emulate it or a practice it or a imitate it. No, we want to do it. So we are the first prime mover for innovation to happen or any extension of whatever the existing status quo, we are the one to deliver to the world. So they're not waiting for the innovation to happen and then they have to imitate it. These are the companies, their DNA is innovation. Their DNA is creating change on a, upgrading on the daily basis. That's the reason you have versions, versions, versions of the apples, right? If there is no, uh, that kind of standard operations of Apple, I don't think that it's not that easy to run a business with the same kind of philosophy, with the same kind of grip with the customers, even after your founder or even if your the person, you know, uh, legends are not there in the market. Still, you continue the same kind of legacy. It's not easy. It really takes a lot of, lot of strategic input into it. A lot of product and process innovation is a continuous basis. It's not easy to, you know, keep the customers engaged with the same feel throughout, right? That's what is happening with some companies like Apple is one one good that company. It it uh, it always surprises you with a lot of other kind of innovations it does and a lot of processes changes that does and keeping that kind of connectivity with the customers right. So facing the competition, how do you really do change and in innovation introduce into your company? It depends upon your basically your organizational culture and value system. Some would like to do a innovation as a hodgepodge. Just because something has changed, you have to do it. Now, one worst example or a very bad example that I would like to give is Doordarshan. Doordarshan wanted to have change. How? You wanted to have all the youngsters talking the kind of a very cool buzz and then happening things to happen there on the thing. You have taken the batch of youngsters just to talk, but later on, the whole system of a Doordarshan's programs offering have not changed. So it's like a very a small portion of what you want to bring in change has happened, but it is not sustaining. Your change is not sustaining. Then again, there will be a dip in your change or in the market service, the way that you would like to serve the market. Yeah. Somebody raise their hand, please. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, recent example of Kerala government to start their own OTT platform is also mm -hmm. kind of this kind of innovation. Hmm. Not only to promote the Malayalam films, but also to generate the revenue. Hmm. So this is also the classic example which I, uh, which comes to my mind. Thank you. Yes, yes. And so is the case. One thing you know, Bata, Bata as a company. I don't think the youngsters ever connect themselves to Bata. Right. Not youngsters, even the corporate or any other one who would like to go for a more of a fancy or a more sophisticated thing. They never looked at Bata as their you know, prime brand because it's never featuring themselves, featuring into that kind of 
you know, uh, philosophy at all. But recently, last four or five years, Barter started something very interestingly, even for the youngsters with more of a different kind of styles and designs and variants, which is catering to the different age groups. Interesting. And that's the reason it had to come with the lot of, lot of thought went into it. It came with a, a punch word called, punchline, surprisingly Barter. The very word surprisingly itself is asking, is itself is actually explaining to a lot. Don't get surprised. We are the same Bata, but we came with so many other things, right? So surprisingly, Bata is surprising a lot that yes, suddenly Bata is also into this space of angsters. Suddenly, Bata is also giving you different kind of refined and different kind of sophisticated designs, which it was not earlier. Earlier, it was okay with only certain kind of school shoes and basic other things, but Today, Bata is also. So I I, I give a lot of appreciation people, those who have done that advertising and branding, you know, thing to them, the consultancy guys, those who have done. That word is interesting. It's wrapping up the whole thing that you wanted to look at. Why Bata is into this space? Why Bata is making this kind of, you know, shoes now? It, it answered a lot. Surprisingly, Bata. Hmm? So these are, you know, I mean, they wanted to give a facelift. So... How much of face look that you give to your company? Are you able to do that on a continuous basis? You are going to evolve. You know, change is nothing but you're evolving as a company. You know, if it is not happening, then it's like, you know, out of the pressure that you're losing the market, you do a bit of portion of a change. Again, you continue to reap the benefits. And then again, suddenly there is an external force and external market pressure that is making you, either you change or you perish or you, you'll become extinct in the market. You change, you try to change certain things. This is not going to last forever and it will not sustain because that change is not coming from innate. It's not having the right kind of orientation towards serving the customer with a purpose. It is only on the basis of, you know, survival thing it's like a survival feat so we don't actually look at survival feat also as part of the change it's definitely you're changing but it's a survival feat durdarshan is a survival feat bata is also a survival feat we don't of course it's a change but definitely you have not come up with that today if if ambassador comes with a joint venture with the Jaguar or joint venture with the Lamborghini, of course, you look at it surprisingly. But why are you doing it now? It's a very desperate kind of move to change because you wanted to have the same Indian market once it was there in your pocket in the entire car segment when you were a monopoly. No. Today, the the options are way, various options are there for the customers. So, of course, you will do. You are trying to do into a luxury brand, but very few people would look at you unless... You have come with so many other facilities. So that's why challenges are, why are you changing? What's making you change? How do you call your change is a change? Is it desperate? Is it survival? Is it that you genuinely, genuinely want to make yourself changing to the future and you have got your plans to that? Yes, now I am comfortable. I'm into a cash cause and I'm into a very different, you know, revenues are really great. Loyalty is really great, but now itself is how I can experiment with myself. So my R and D is always to how do I serve the extension. So if this is what your philosophy from your boardroom discussions or the decisions, I think you're on the right decision. But if you are only trying to do it just because externally, so competitions have increased, and then if you don't change here and there, some kind of moves, you'll be going to be extinct. Then that that change does not give a right kind of meaning to you and that is what your change is nothing but to face the competition and sometimes it's desperate sometimes it is survival sometimes just hodgepodge whatever it is and we have seen certain kind of companies coming into now evolving workplace dynamics is also one of the things that you may have to change because um most of the other uh, sectors were not ready to give work from home but these days uh, apart from software, others also started. Earlier, we were not seeing that much of work from home from other sectors, but only IT sector was happening that way. But today, many sectors started actually adapting that because workplace dynamics have changed. Your your um, your uh, assessment and your looking at the proficiency and the uh, you know performance levels 
uh, is not just how many number of hours the employee is sitting in your uh, desk and the physically, but how much of work that he has actually uploaded or given or contributed. There are ways to measure. So the workplace evolving workplace dynamics also is making it a change so much. Either you process or the product wise, the service wise, or the counting or the measure wise. Everything is changing. So even in that process, you are actually changing. Okay. <clears throat> Um, this I would like to need, need more time. I think I'll stop it over here right now after five minutes. Any other discussion or questions? Uh, no, ma'am. Yeah. So any other examples that you would like to quote? So I would like you guys to come with a bit of preparation of a discussion. Uh, you call it nano as a, as a discussion for, you call it innovation. Is it a failure innovation or a better innovation? Or uh, is it whatever it is? What is the, your discussion? So Nano, we will discuss next time. Yahoo, we will discuss next time. Okay. Mm, Vespa versus Bajaj decision also much in with more data you can come. And any other thing that you come with, we will discuss about it. Okay. And um, your smart watches versus any other thing, a regular watch, people, those who are losing their brand, losing their market, um, is it a necessity? So you also can come with certain kind of things as a debate. As I said, uh, we will go with the theory, but we will try to, my way of doing is more of interaction. I would like to more of a discussion because we are not into regular students classroom. I'm with the learned people of, like all of you, those are working professionals. I think we'll enjoy talking and we'll enjoy more debating. We'll enjoy more drawing examples. That should be the deliberations of the class, I guess, right? You agree? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I'll call it a day today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.